The third person, which also is important, her contribution, is Betty Schneider. Holburton is what she married and her name became Betty Schneider Holburton. Uh, she developed, and this is also very important, if I got a program, I can show you in a graphical manner, in a diagrammatic manner, the algorithm. And that algorithm, which is shown diagrammatically, there are some uh, shapes that we use, for instance, if I use a diamond shape, actually. So that is like a question mark. The question mark may have a yes, no, or, uh, you know, um, some other kind. So you will find there are different kinds of symbols and the flow charting is a very important concept in computer programming. Hopefully, I think in our course, we may have some exposure on flow charting to you, though it is not now very common in these days. But earlier when we used to do the programming in Fortran and Pascal, the flow charting was very considered important. It also gives you a training of what is called as a structured programming. So slowly and slowly, we will introduce those concepts to you. But she was the first one who developed the concept that, oh, if it is a very complicated program and if you have to write it, why not we draw it? So drawing a program is what Betty Schneider did, actually. So you will find that all these concepts of efficient, elegant programming were developed by these scientists, actually. And therefore, I thought I will also mention to you that as much as hardware, as much as the theoretical foundation. So there are three elements, as you can see, that the first one was the theoretical foundation, like Alan Turing did, or like Claude Shannon did. Or similarly, you have the build the machines, like von Neumann build the machine, or uh, Atenasov build the machine. And then you have got the people who did the programming. And these are the people who did the programming and the pioneers in the field of programming. Obviously, now things have moved. You've got different user languages. You've got menu-driven programs. And what is the difference between a program and a menu-driven package? We will discuss it later on, actually. Now, this is another very important uh, uh, slide for me. Uh, again, as I said, fascinating developments have happened in the last 100 years. And some things which we take it for granted as a very simple thing have been done by very ingenious people. Uh, even before I start from the left, I would like to show you the person on the right. And there is a clue in that photograph as to what is his contribution. Can you think about it? Look at the photograph very carefully. Yeah? His name is Doug Engelbert. He was a very famous uh, engineer, as a matter of fact. And the concept of the mouse is there. And, and the word mouse was coined by him. And the device that he built is shown over there on the table. So he died recently, actually. But he was a very famous robotics engineer also. But Doug Engelbert developed the concept of how to input the uh, information. And in, there are input devices, there are some output devices. One of the key input devices is the mouse. Earlier it was felt that the only way you can input the data will be through punch cards. Then the keyboard came along. And beyond the keyboard, I think for the first time as a pointing device, there is positioning devices and there are pointing devices. Now the mouse is something as a pointing device. And the development of a mouse is the invention of Doug Engelbert. And so his, but I will go now back to the one on the left hand side. His name is Shockley, William Shockley actually. He won the Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize for uh, the transistor. The development of the transistor has been a very, very important and significant development in the evolution of the computing machinery and the computer science. And obviously, the person who has to be credited, he was at Bell Labs. He developed this whole Shockley effect, as it is called. And then subsequently, the development of transistors. He won the Nobel Prize. And uh, he has been one of the pioneers in the field of computer science also. So Shockley and Engelbert, and the one in the bottom, he was working. There was also another very interesting group that came along late 60s, early 70s on the California side. So you will find that the development moves from Europe to the eastern side of US and then to the western side of US in the California. And you will find if you look at the last 25 years, significant developments 
occurred through the groups which were working in California. And the first one was at the Xerox Corporation. As you know, the, the, this was called as Park Xerox. And in fact, that research lab has been wound up now, in fact. But this Park Xerox Research Lab did phenomenal work. And the tabletop machines that you see, uh, up until now, uh, up until that point, like when we were students, we had to go to a mainframe computer. The mainframe computer will be like a gigantic uh, hardware and many other things. And you had to go every day, feed in your program, get the output, go home, and then study what are the mistakes you have made, again go back next day, again feed in, and so on and so forth. That was the life of using computers. All of it got changed when the centralized computing became distributed computing and the concept of a desktop computer came along. And this was mainly because of the development in the field of microchips, microelectronics, and several other concepts of hardware digital electronics that were also possible at that time to be exploited. And the person who exploited that beautifully is Alan Kay. He built the first tabletop computer at Xerox Park using the modern printed circuit boards. Now even printed circuit boards have changed enormously now. Instead of a single layer, you have got multi-layer and many, many other things actually. So this is like these are the three people you can say around 60s. The developments were happening, they matured in the late 70s, and by 80s, the word PC got coined, the personal computer. The desktop computer was still considered as a mainframe, sort of a machine, workstation came along. There, were, uh, there was a company called Digital Equipment Corporation, and they developed the machines called the Wax 11, which was a very, very popular machine at one time throughout the world, as a matter of fact. And the Wax 11 was still some sort of a mainframe version or mainframe-like computer. The concept of a desktop as well as a personalized machine, which was called as PC, as we all know, personalized computer. And that was, now I'm sure some of the faces are familiar to you. And this is like, I, I could go on and on on this actually. There are many people whom I have missed. There are many people's contributions. I'm not able to explain it to you mainly because the, the, the field is very wide and I can't give uh, the picture of all of them. It, that itself will take the whole course as a matter of fact. But obviously the, uh, the contribution of Steve Jobs uh, who pioneered the Apple computer and sub very many concepts of the Apple computer. Uh, the Windows operating system. At that time there were several operating systems on the personal computer. As a matter of fact, we have used some of them. But then, the genius of Bill Gates created the Windows operating system, different versions of the Windows operating system. And today you will find that it is almost a de facto standard throughout the world. When you buy the PC, you will find that there is a Windows inside actually.